William Johnson is dead, and with him, the Templar plot to steal the land of my people. But in ending this threat, I have revealed another. On his body was a letter addressed to John Pitcairn, containing orders to root out and destroy Patriot weapons and supplies. Should he succeed in this, the colonists will be unable to maintain their resistance, and the Templars will surely take control. So long as Pitcairn lives, the danger remains. I need to find him. He needs to die. I thought it might bring clarity or instill a sense of accomplishment, but all I feel is regret. Hold fast to that. Such sacrifices must never come lightly. I had to do it. Not only for my people, but for all the others Johnson would have harmed. It's a start. But to truly be free of Templar influence, all of them must be dealt with in turn. Even your father... I know. You speak the words, but do you believe them? Seems we've company. What is it? A request for aid from Paul Revere. Seems the Redcoats are up to something in Boston. Guess you made an impression on the Sons of Liberty. They mistake me for one of their own. Please tell Mr. Revere he has my sympathies, but I cannot help at present. You might wish to reconsider. John Pitcairn is mentioned by name. Where am I to go? Mr. Revere's house in Boston. If you'd like, I can... Ah, Connor! What a relief! You came! <laughs> Allow me to... <laughs> to introduce you to William Dawes and Robert Newman. Your letter said John Pitcairn was here. Aye. He's readying an assault on Lexington, where Adams and Hancock have taken shelter. After that, he will march on Concord, hoping to destroy our weapons and supplies. You must help us. Only tell me where to find him, and I will put a stop to this. He has dozens, if not hundreds, of soldiers at his command. You cannot hope to match him by yourself. But fear not, for you will not have to. We have an entire army of our own, merely awaiting the order to take up arms. Then you must call upon them. Indeed. You and I will cross the Charles River and rouse the boys. William, I need you to take the overland route and do the same. Robert, I need you up in Christchurch. Light the signal. Two lanterns, our enemy comes by sea. No time for dawdling, my friend. We have lives to save. Come on. Ah. They've only left a single horse. We'll have to ride together. Ah. You take the reins, I'll navigate. Quickly, Connor, get on the horse! I'll guide you towards those we need to alert. Follow my directions, and we'll be done in no time. Yes, this is exactly where we need to be. This is it! You have got the right place. Let everyone know that the regulars march for Lexington and Concord. The British are coming! Back in the saddle, my friend. We have more people to warn. This is it! You have got the right place!
spread the word. The regulars are coming out. At once! This is it! You have got the right place! The regulars are coming. Here! We're here! Get them! Find a way to get rid of them, Connor! That was much too close for comfort. Let us take care to avoid any further surprises. Uh, Connor? This is it! You have got the right place! Where the devil is he? Are you sure we are in the right place? Well, sure I'm sure. Prescott? Evening, gents. Listen, the regulars are out. You need to rally your men. And, uh... put on some trousers. At once! Welcome to Lexington, Connor. Now let's find Hancock and Adams. Hmm. No sign of Dawes. I hope he's all right. Paul, Connor. Good to see you. You need to leave. The Redcoats are coming. Aye, so Williams told us. Let them conduct their little search. They'll find nothing. You don't understand. Pitcairn intends to kill you. I'm afraid it's true. I suppose we have no choice then but to go. What of you three? Dawes and I will continue on to Concord. Connor? It's best you stay here and help our man John Parker hold the town. It'll give us time to spread the word. You damn rebels! Lay down your arms and disperse! What the deuce are you doing? Hold your position! Cravens! Break us! They are not coming back. You will have to make do with those who remain. Don't you lecture me, or now. Return fire! Return fire! You need to get to Concord and warn the others. Show this to whoever leads there. Should be a man by the name of James Barrett. <laughs> Go on now! Blood's been spilled in Lexington, and there's more to come. The regulars are on the march. You don't say. And why do you think I'm men up here? Go home, or you get yourself killed. I've enough to worry about without some green boy looking to play at hero. I can vouch for him. John Parker as well.
Where's Revere? Captured. What? Fear not. That man's no stranger to sticky situations. He'll be fine. I'm sure of it. <clears throat> Your ladies finished gossiping? Parker seems to believe you're not completely useless, so I suppose there's a thing or two you might be able to help with. When the fighting starts, we'll need to hold those positions there. They're critical to the defense of Concord. Good boys. Not used to soldier, and they need some with the experience to direct them. That's something you can do. You'd best be telling the truth. You have my word. Then I suppose all that's left to do is wait. Sir! Mount the barricades! No! Ensure my men hold those positions. If the Red Devils break through, we're finished. What would you have me do? Listen carefully. The Redcoats will form firing lines. Order the men to shoot just before the line is ready. Too soon and they'll miss their targets. Too late. And the enemy will open fire first. Understood. And if any of those bastards make it through, engage them. You must keep my men alive. Hold fire! Prepare yourself. Go! Wait for my signal. Fire! Fall back! Fall back! We did it! They're turning tail! It takes a true monster to do something like this. At least they're gone. I should have struck when I had the chance. Do you know where Pitcairn could have gone? Back into the withered bosom of the British, no doubt. So that he may regroup and plan his next atrocity. I need to find him. Every day I wait, more will suffer. Chin up, friend. Many who should have died today now live because of you. And, and what of them? We do the best we can with what we've got. It is not enough. Hmm. It never is. For the support of the glorious cause, I beg they will accept my most cordial thanks for this distinguished testimony of their approbation. But lest some unlucky event should happen, unfavorable to my reputation, I beg it may be remembered by every gentleman in the room that I, this day, declare with utmost sincerity I do not think myself equal to the command I am honored with. Truly, there as is pay, no man better sir, suited I to beg the task. Leave to assure really? The Congress that I as can no think of pecuniary several. Consideration could have Charles me Lee. To have accepted this arduous employment at the do I know you? I would not expect happiness. you to remember. <laughs> I Come, Connor, there's someone I want you to problem. meet. I will keep an exact account of my expenses. I'm sorry to pull you away Those, like that. I doubt not they the will last discharge, thing we need is that the is two all of you I desire. coming to blows. Now, Connor, allow me to introduce you to our newly appointed commander in chief, George Washington. Ah, so you're the one who saved Sam and John at Lexington. It was the Patriots who did that. I merely lent support. <laughs> As humble as he is brave, we could use more men like you. I'm sorry, but if you'll excuse me, I should attend to Charles over there. He looks none too happy about being passed over for command. It was good to meet you, Connor.
Tell me you have news of Pitcairn. I'm told he's taken shelter in Boston, where he's guarded by a thousand redcoats. The only way you're gonna get at him is if we draw him out. And lucky for you, we're launching an offensive against the city in order to do just that. Israel Putnam has been given command of our forces. Present this to him and he'll provide whatever aid you require. You'll find him at the encampment on Bunker Hill. You have my thanks. No need. It's the least I could do. Pitcairn's a dangerous man. The sooner we're rid of him, the better. I would say the same of Charles Lee. Now that's an altogether different beast. Let us leave it for another day. Best you head to Boston, Connor. Hold and state your business! I'm looking for Israel Putnam. On whose orders? Samuel Adams. Follow me. It's not Bunker Hill. Aye, it's Briggs. There's been some disagreement as to where we should encamp. Any news from Boston? The Tories aren't moving. And any time we try to press them, we lose a dozen men. I think Putnam and the others plan to assemble artillery on these hills. A good shelling might make the Red Coast rethink their strategy. And what of John Pitcairn? That bastard's the cagiest of the bunch. He's appeared time to time to taunt us or send regards by way of cannon fire. It's all right, though. He'll have what's coming to him soon enough. Putnam's just up my head. You can't miss. I don't care much for your excuses, gentlemen. We should be building on Bunker Hill. Breeds is closer to the city, but it is also closer to their artillery! I read my case. I'm going back to Bunker Hill. Good day, gentlemen. General Putnam. What? I'm looking for John Hopkins. I was told you'd be able to help me find him. He's stuck away inside that city with no reason to leave. As long as that ship continues its assault, we'll never flush him out. But if the ship was silenced... Oh, then what? I need to get off his arse and come forward. I shall fly this flag to signal my success. And I shall speak fondly of you at your funeral. And you tremble. They've better numbers, you say. Better weapons, better training. But I do not fear. And neither should you. For what they have in material, 
They lack in conviction and care. But not us. We have discipline. We have order. And most importantly, we have passion. We believe. To so maintain vigilance, serve your ammo, ensure a proper line of sight, and above all else, men, do not fire until you see the white of their eyes. I'll be damned. <laughs> you did it. That was quite a speech. Lies, all of it, I'm afraid. Still, such words have carried us thus far. And what a pit card. He's left Boston. As I said, he would. And set up camp on Molten Hill. There's no good way to get at him. Not with that maelstrom growing down below. I suppose you could circle around a bit and wait for us to thin their ranks. There is no time. I will have the chance of direct approach. That's twice today you proposed the impossible. I see no other choice. Not because you're mad as a March Hare, son. I expect an apology on my return.
To protect Adams and Hancock and those they serve. You meant to kill them. Kill them? Are you mad? I wanted only to parley. There was so much to discuss. To explain. You put an end to that now. If you speak true, then I will carry your last words to them. They must lay down their arms. They must stop this war. Why them and not the Redcoats? Do you not know think we ask the same question of the British? These things take time. And it would have succeeded had you let me play my part. Part of the puppeteer. For better we hold the strings on another. No, the strings should be severed. All should be free. And we should live forever on castles in the sky. You wield your blade like a man, but your mouth like a child. And more will die now. Because of that! Sa ha yu yanere ne o tēna am da se takwe. Tini o ne yaho tēna tam da se takwe. For me like that. Why don't you just go off there and just help this cap retreat? Don't ever do that again, you hear me? God damn it! General Putnam. You live. The same cannot be said for Pitcairn. Well done, I suppose. <laughs> but it matters little now. I'm ordering a full retreat. We have lost too many in exchange for too little. If the Tories want this hill so badly, let them have it. Boston is the true prize. We have a bigger problem. What do you mean? This can't be right. It says they plan to murder Washington. <laughs> 